All right, let's let's talk about our crappy culture. So uh, I just want to continue this thought into the news business with a word of wisdom from Bill Maher. Bill Maher, you know, I always have a kind of respect for Bill Maher, even though I hate the whole sneering of things. The, the, if, the, if the audience applauds, it's true. And if they don't applaud, it's not true. You know, the whole, the whole thing of attitude as a moral guide, I think, is ridiculous. But the one thing I've always liked about Maher is he's not afraid to let people disagree and to bring on people who uh, don't always agree with his opinion. He used to have Ann Coulter on. I think he still has Sam Harris on. You know, he talks about uh, he has a, a range of opinions that he will allow on, which I appreciate. The... The divide in our culture is being played out in the news. Donald Trump's poll numbers are going up. I think they're at 49 or 50 percent. They are, uh, you know, this is after the press has piled on him, hammered him, hammered him, hammered him. And he has made some mistakes himself. <laughs> you know, some of his tweets have blown up in his face. Some of his, his talk about guns was ridiculous. I, I think this tariff thing is ridiculous, but that's for another time. But the, the, the left-wing press is peddling this hysteria. And you know who it's affecting? The left-wing press. This is the thing. This is the David Brooks thing. He thinks the culture war is being fought in his office. He thinks if the New York Times disapproves, everybody disapproves. Brian Stelter went into this hysterical rant about there's too much news. We're being overwhelmed by news. Listen to this. We wanted to take a look at what all these explosive headlines added up to and how we can all, as consumers, make sense of it. We went ahead and looked at the chirons. That's a term for the cable news banners on the bottom of the screen. And we picked out just some of the banners that appeared on CNN this week. It's going to take more than three minutes to go through all these. We'll slow it down for you in a minute. But I just want you to think about how fast they're going by, how much news is piling up on the screen. I mean, we're barely to the middle of the week at this point. It's Wednesday now. And... I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. Just taking a look at the list. Doesn't it feel like we're drowning in news? Doesn't it feel like the number of scandals, the number of allegations of corruption, the number of uh, new developments about the Mueller probes, the number of stories about White House infighting, that it's all just too much to keep up with? And if so, what should journalists do to help? What can viewers and news consumers do to keep up? I think that's the conversation that we need to have at a moment like this, where it really does feel like the White House is in a rolling, <laughs> ongoing crisis. <laughs> Stelter making himself hysterical by reporting on stuff that doesn't matter. It actually doesn't really matter what's happening at the White House and whether Trump likes chaos or not. I mean, that, you know, Trump, one of his lines at this uh, press gathering was, uh, we don't know who's going to leave next, Stephen Miller or Melania, which <laughs> was pretty, pretty funny. Here's Bill Maher talking about the way the news works today. And he, he says, I used to think that if a journalist reports it, it's news, but not anymore. Listen to this. How about some rules for identifying actual news? For example, when an internet headline reads, you won't believe, yes, you will, and no, it's not news. <laughs> when anyone is demanding an apology, unless they have hostages, that's not news. And when the offended group are identified as the internet, Twitter, or people, it's nobody. This is not an outlier. This is a constant and prominent part of today's journalism, creating some bull non-issue that a few trolls will predictably go a over, and then reporting on those unrepresentative tweets like all of America is talking about nothing else. Justin Timberlake used a projection of Prince for his Super Bowl halftime show, and people are furious. No, nobody cared. <laughs> People are really mad that Sean White dragged the American flag after he won the gold. No, not even a little, you f***ing liars. <laughs> Weight Watchers is targeting teens, and Twitter is outraged. No, it isn't. It's the same three people. And it's not hard to find three people who are mad at anything. I could say good morning on Twitter, and three people would object. Good in your privileged world, Bill Maher. <laughs> it's, good, it's good, funny stuff, but it, what he doesn't realize, I think, Maher, is this also applies to three sources who are close to the Mueller investigation say this, or two sources who are close to the White House say that he yelled, Trump yelled at Hope Hicks before she quit, none of which we know is true at all and isn't really news. I mean, the stuff that's going on at the FDA that is making your life healthier, 
that's news. The stuff that's going on at the EPA, which is making your life freer, that's news. They're not reporting any of that because all that redounds to Trump's leadership and his the fact that he's doing still so far a good job as as president of the United States. This whole thing about outrage that he's pointing out is it has to do with something very deep that obviously the show is over. We're not going to talk about it today, but it has to do with something very deep that's happening in our civilization, which is both the right and the left don't no longer know why exactly they're saying what they're saying. They no longer know why things are good or why things are bad. And so they're just fighting for control. They're just, if they're outraged, then they can win your emotions. If you say, yes, that does feel outrageous. It does. They're no longer making Argue, actual arguments. And when they start to know, when we start to remember and go back and realize what we're talking about, we can start making arguments. And then the only people will be, matter will be the people on the right because they're the only people who still know how to argue in a friendly way. 